Uh, probably uh, because of the uh, modification. Well, there, there, there are a lot of things going on there. Yeah. Um, first of all, the banks have gotten into a lot of trouble in the last couple of years. Uh, the whole robo signing scandal, yeah. uh, for example. Now, the robo signing actually had nothing to do with Massachusetts, but but it put the banks under the microscope, and it resulted in a that and other really unseemly practices um, brought about a lot of lawsuits. In fact, uh, the attorney general here in Massachusetts was one of many that was suing the banks. Um, unfortunately, those cases settled, um, and the banks. The banks really got away with something yeah. in, in terms of settlement, but it has. But what it did was it kept the foreclosures down yeah. uh, while the lawsuits were going on. But now that they're over, the the bank's hands seem to be untied, and they seem to be picking right up where they left off. Uh -huh. um, in terms of the modification, what we're seeing a lot in the modification area is that it's a source of delay, as opposed to a as opposed to a solution to the problem. I see. Um, I've had any number of people come into my office and they've been in the modification process for months, yeah. a year, year and a half <laughs> talking about modification. Um, but it never gets finalized, it never gets a final approval and ultimately they're, they're coming to me because they now, a year, year and a half later, are in the process of losing their homes. No. And what I think was happening in modification, it's, it's, it's a bizarre program. There are rules, there are a lot of rules, but nobody seems to follow them. I see. Uh, the banks don't seem to care about the rules in terms of modification. They really don't. And their frontline people, the people yeah. who you actually talk to when you yeah. call, yeah. don't seem to know the rules at all. Uh, but unfortunately, there's no enforcement for the rules. You can't sue the bank. Right. You cannot sue the bank when they break HAMP rules. Uh, HAMP is the Home Affordable Modification Program. It's, it's the, the federal structure. Yeah. And what's going on here, I think, is it's not law. It never came from Congress. It's something the president just kind of made up uh, to make it, you know, I don't want to get too political, but to make it look like he's doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but without actually doing anything that's going to hurt them. And the banks have kind of gone along because I think they needed to kind of kick the can down the road. Yeah. If they had foreclosed on all these houses in 2008, 2009, 2010, I think we would have been in an even bigger mess yeah. uh, than we were in. And the banks knew it. You know, they, they, they knew they could not do it. And so they've kind of postponed the problem to now. Well, things are not so great, but a little more, a little more stable. Yeah. It's a better environment to foreclose into. And uh, regarding to the bankruptcy, is it a bankruptcy rate is now is increasing because of the uh, many well, people in trouble paying their mortgages and well, it increased earlier. Okay, yeah. Yes, uh, 2009, 2010, especially, uh, were were big years um, in terms of increases in bankruptcy filings. But it's it's certainly a very different environment in in bankruptcy now. You know, it, it, it's funny because there used to be a time when all my bankruptcy clients came in through the yellow pages kind of a thing, yeah. through, through advertising. It used, there used to be a time when you got no word of mouth in bankruptcy. Yeah. I, I used to complain that people will talk about their accident lawyer, they'll talk about their divorce lawyer, they will even talk about their criminal lawyer, yeah. but they will not mention their bankruptcy lawyer. Uh, this economic downturn has been so severe and so widespread that now most of my clients are referrals from other clients and not coming in from the website or the yellow pages or, or, or some other yeah. um, shows like this, you know, some other um, way of outreach. But um, most of them come to me and say, you know, a coworker or a neighbor or a friend, yeah. not even a relative, yeah. uh, told me I should come see you. And, and so I think that the kind of the stigma of bankruptcy has, has changed a lot because it was just such a, you know, so many people. Uh, got hurt so bad in this last downturn. Thank you, Mr. Haskell. Khi mà sông bỏ bài chỉ sang khai plan nơi ở với đại lục Haskell ban dây thì mỗi trận tấn pro lục miền cà phê sau tận lục này kháng bệnh gặp si. Hỏi bệnh gặp si có bị trận tấn tận nâng cao lục trận tấn trận để dân hai thay đổi xây phong đài. Đối với lục ban dây về chuyện để dân hai thay cà cà sầm rùa modification program đây là 
ดลรอดเพียมในการกมันบานรีบช่องเอาเมียนมอิฟิเคชันการพลัดประตูปปอนโดยจะยืนตึงเตะหายยืนมันอายบองเตะบานยืนโจทย์ทการวิธีเดียวยืนเตะรีไฟเนนเตะหรือก็ยืนเตะโดเตะประกาประจกเท้ากับใบแตงอ๋อนู้นคือถ้าเนื้อแต่เพื่อเอาเยื่อมันอายปีจอมในการพิจารณามันอายมันโตเรศาบเตะบานโดยเช่นเธอกอดกับบานในใจพองได้ท่าการทุบแบงกับซีนี่คือเวียการล้างจิตฉลาดจากปีชนะปีปอนเป็นบุญชนะปีปอนดอกปัจจัยของชนะปีปอนบุญแต่ปีนี้คือท่าแบงกับซีก็มันมีการล้างจีนชนะมุนมุนปัญหาได้ให้โลกกับบานไอคิตี้ทางแบงกับซีนี่โดยเฉพาะโลกลูกใส่ดามีนกูบมนองมันอายบังเตะบานหรือก็จังตุ่มเละเจ้าหรือเตะดายืมมันเจ้ามันโตในการลุบบะโตติดยืมเจ้าไฟแบงกับซีกีท่าส่งมาช่วยมาออฟฟิกอดเดินเนื้อผ่านสิทธิ์ปรากฏมีปัจจัยติดขังเพื่อแบ่งกับสิ่งนี้บ้าน second you mentioned about you doing the one of the areas called the personal injury so I'm I'm sure there's a lot of Cambodian who gone to your office want to file claim against the insurance for the for their fault and everything can you elaborate a bit about cases so far does insurance give you a harder time comparing to a previous years it's not nearly as bad as it used to be a few years ago the insurance companies were really you know they 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 were trying to put their throats their their feet on everybody's throats and they backed off a lot yeah. Uh, we don't see very many cases going into special investigations anymore, I for, see. You know, for example. See. Uh, on, on top of that, I think the settlements are, are starting to get a little bit better. I see. Uh, fewer of my clients are having to go to insurance medical exams. I mean, I mean just, you know, the, the, the pure baloney yeah. uh, that we were seeing a few years ago, uh, as a matter of course, we're, we're, we're just not seeing anymore. Um, we just uh, won a jury trial a couple weeks ago. Oh, that yeah. that, um, that was a real shocker to the to the insurance company. I see. Um, you know, because because a jury verdict, uh, or a jury just they were claiming a, they were claiming a jump in. They were claiming my client wasn't in the car. You know, and and they expected us to simply give up. And um, and not only did we not give up, we tried the case, and the jury came back with, "You guys are." You guys are crazy. Yeah. You know, cut yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> the, the poor lady was in the car. Yeah. You know, uh, take care of her. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so you know, so I think that there's even so even the juries are beginning to, the pendulum is starting to swing back. You know, yeah. the, the other way. I think people are starting to understand that the insurance companies have kind of overplayed their hand. I see. Uh, the last few years. So no, the 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 injury practice is is picking up. I actually had. Eight Camaro Lao people come into my office today yeah. uh, with uh, new accident cases, and and they, and I think they're all going to yeah. work out. So uh, if if a person uh, get into a car accident, I mean, don't feel discouraged to uh, find the attorney, and because uh, knowing that the insurer may give a hard time denying their case, so uh, we should uh, pursue the uh, the claim if you uh, really get the. Injured by the car accident or something. Well, yeah. yeah. If you're injured in a car accident, yeah. by all means, come on in. Yeah. I mean, first of all, most of the problems are my problems, not yeah. <laughs> yeah. not the other person's anyway. Yeah. But um, but as I say, we're bringing these things to successful conclusions, and and look, I mean, I understand what happened a few years ago. Yeah. And they made it into into a real pain in the neck to bring a claim. Yeah, I heard about but, it. Yeah. Yeah, but those days, that's that's done. Yeah. That's done. So, uh, Kumar Som, Sang Khai, Pnei, Avay, Dei, Kod, Maan, Yei, Pru Tha, Khanong, uh, Lek, Khanam, Mui, Dei, Nong, Ka, Ji, Me, Thi, Vi, Nuh, Kuh, Pnei, Khang, Dei, Yeng, Ha, Tha, Personal, Injury, Ka, Yang, Ka, Na, Yeng, Mi, Kro, Thna, Lan, Yeng, Chui, Kluon, Prang, Yeng, Ta, Yeng, Ya, Rome, Thi, Vi, Dei, Ka, Pia, Ka, Dei, Yeng, Rui, Ka, Yeng, Pa, Dang, Ta, Ko, Mun, Tani, Ra, Prong, Pun, Chang, Ngai, Ban, Ji, Yeng, Bong, A, Sarang, Lan, Di, Chai, Ba, San, Yip, Bong, Pa, On, hay dùng từ pet lúc ba mươi chết đã thà không người dạy pp bây giờ năm hôn khai thì nhớ đập rồi nó tan tai tan tai bằng không ở dương từ pet từ lại bàn tay lại ní cái thằng I've always found that the summer months are are you you see more accidents I see I think that's just because there are more cars on the road in the summertime people drive more yeah when it snows people tend to stay home yeah and plus the increasing all the population of the cars in the United States the uh, the next question is I would like to touch base on the immigration, uh, which is the uh, one of the main area that you are practicing in your law office. And uh, 
you did mention that you were in Cambodia in January and you are going back to Cambodia in July. I think one of the reasons you're going there because you want to check out some of the status of your client at the embassy, something like that. Would you please elaborate a bit about what's going on at the embassy uh, regarding the uh, cases? Well, of course. Um, yeah. you know, I'm very fortunate because I, because I do get to travel yeah. um, in that region, Thailand, Cambodia, and the Laos, um, you know, quite frequently. My family goes over for the entire summer. It's good to be them, and I get to visit. And we also went over this past this past January, as you mentioned. Yeah. And yes, while I'm there, I go to the embassy. Uh, it is something that I do. I meet with the chief counsel, who's yeah. who's a nice guy, but seems to turn down a lot of petitions. <laughs> <laughs> and so a lot of these folks who have been turned down yeah. have have come to see me uh, to talk about their cases, and I'm able to bring them up. Yeah. You know, when I'm over there. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny, it's, it's very different being over there from trying to do it from here. Uh, from here, they ignore you. Yeah. I mean, it's the most amazing thing. You know, you send email. And I used to have the same problem before I started going all the time. You'd send email to the embassy, and you just get back some, some form reply from the embassy staff. Yeah. That, that doesn't say anything about your case, probably just tells you you're too late uh, kind of a thing. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a story. I, I had a case. A um, fellow had been, had, had tried to bring over his fiance. She got turned down. You know, I emailed the embassy, you know, and I said, look, I'm coming in, I'm coming in a month and a half. I want to talk about this case. The embassy staff emailed me back, said, sorry, you're too late. The file's been returned <laughs> uh, to USCIS and Immigration Service here in the yeah, United States. Yeah. You know, but I knew it hadn't been yet. So, you know, I'm, I'm emailing over. I'm getting back the form replies. I make an appointment at the embassy. I'm sending emails saying I'm coming on this day at this time yeah. to talk about this case. Please make sure the council has the file. Yeah. And to the extent that I got replies at all, it was, you know, yeah, it's been rejected. It's been sent back. I go. I meet with the chief counsel. He has the file. <laughs> we talked about it. We went over his issues. He told me what my guy's going to need to do to, to make it happen. Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. I come back. I, I go to the nearest cyber cafe to email my office about what happens that number one my staff will know because I know the clients gonna be there first thing the next yeah. morning and also because I wanted to get all my thoughts down in writing before you know about what happened yeah. uh, before I forgot while I'm doing all this maybe an hour hour and a half after my meeting with the chief counsel I get an email from the embassy staff saying the chief counsel will meet with me <laughs> he'll have the file he's looking forward to talking to <laughs> me <laughs> ຍິນມາສົ່ງຈຸມຮຽບຖ້າລົກລຸຍຫັດສະກິດຝຶກດຳເນີນຕາສົກຄວາຍຄົນຄາຍ ការណាគិបបដិសេធការណីនឹងគេផ្ញាការណីនឹងមកអឺដូច្នេះបើសិនជាអល់លោកលោកស្រីមានគោលបំណងចង់ទូរសព្ទ <coughs> So uh, you mentioned that the uh, you met with chief counsel at the embassy, uh, U.S. embassy in Cambodia. Is it uh, is it the uh, chief counsel could have the same idea and carry the uh, responsibility from the previous chief counsel, or how do they uh, how do the opinion come in, in terms of uh, in terms of replacement for previous counsel? Right. I mean, certainly there are there are rules, and to the extent that they are hard and fast rules, they don't change. However, when you're dealing with a, with a consular office in a U.S. embassy, you have to understand these are, 
their own little fiefdoms, their own little worlds. <laughs> and the chief counsel really has a lot of discretion. All the council officers have a lot of discretion, a lot of um, authority. Yeah. Unfortunately, their decisions can't be appealed anywhere else. I see. And in fact, any time you contact the embassy uh, to complain about somebody being turned down, the first thing they're going to tell you is, our decisions are non-appealable. Right. Uh, kind of right, a thing. Yeah. So, so they really do have a, a lot of leeway. And, and yes, it does make a difference. In fact, what's interesting about my next trip to Cambodia is it's going to be in July. And one of the things I'm really excited about is the old chief council is leaving and the new chief council is coming in. Yeah. So my next trip, I'm actually going to go to Cambodia twice. Uh, once to meet with the old chief to tie up whatever loose ends uh, you know that we have on yeah. whatever files yeah. before he goes away. Yeah. And then I look forward to going back and meeting with the new chief just to talk to him about things. And I'll give you an example of, of one of the first questions I'm going to ask him. The old, old chief counsel, yeah. the one, the chief counsel before the current chief yeah. counsel, you know, I asked him about his thoughts about fiancé visas versus, you know, going over and getting married and sponsoring, you know, well, usually it's your wife, uh, but sponsoring your spouse. Yeah. You know, and basically he told me that he looked at a fiancé petition the same as he looked at a marriage petition. Yeah. He, exactly the same. He told me he understood that it's expensive to get a marriage license in Cambodia. Yeah. He told me he saw no need to subject U.S. citizens to that abuse. Yeah. And that he frankly didn't see why he was encouraging that kind of behavior yeah. in the Cambodian government. Yeah. I spoke to, asked the same question to the new chief counsel, you know, and I, you know, I told him what the old chief had said. And he was like, yeah, but, you <laughs> know, and started to give me all kinds of bureaucratic reasons for why a fiancé visa is harder to get through than a, than a marriage visa. So yeah. there's an example where you have two chief counsels, one after the other, in the same post, yeah. and taking very different attitudes towards the, towards the, same, towards the same filing. I so I do look forward to meeting with the new chief counsel <laughs> and seeing what direction he's going to go right, in, or right. she is going to go right, in. He could, have a, he could have a new idea. Uh, uh, yeah, we have about uh, two or three minutes left. You may come in the south of people in the table, a little slay chunk to the subchol, so mature in the subchap mob. I had a young man, Peter, come down. My question is regarding the, uh, the I 129F uh, petition for fiance. Uh, if someone petitioned for a fiance and then their fiance get interviewed at the US Embassy in Cambodia and denied the case, uh, do you think it's are you recommended to? Uh, to start a new petition, or do we pursue the uh, the case that was sent back to the United States? Uh, ហើយទៅគេបាទសូមអភ័យទោសដោយថាពេលវេលាយើងមានពេលវេលាខ្លីដូច <laughs> <laughs> ในสุขมายนี่คือถ้าการสํารัจนี่เลยตูดในสุขมายนี่คือถ้าการสํารัจนี่เลยตูดในสุขมายนี่คือถ้าการสํารัจนี่เลยตูดในสุขมายนี่
อนมอบปีชง่ายก็แม่งเป็นมันสมานท่าจัดสรองใส่เธอจอพองกำลอกที่กรองแนบนมไปจีดสั่งคลายตาลงร้องจังหวะตาลงหาหนอมอ้อยลงจัดสนาหาหรือวิสนาดำเรอ้อยอ้อจูบชนหรือวิสนาดำเรอ้อยอ้อจูบชนบอกง่ายอนลงสายบอกแม่นหายบอกเออฉันทำไมรอมจังหวังตาลงฉันทำไมรอมจังหวังตาลงรอมตาลงอ้อยอนลงจัดสายจังกิ๊กบายมันรู้ตัวจัดสายเปิดตามบอตาลงเอ้ย